It is uh, minus 10 in Big Lake, Alaska. We are headed 55 miles north for a day of incredible scenery, adventure. We've got uh, a Polaris Assault, and we've got a Kawasaki 450 timber sled, and we are going to tear up the backcountry. Uh, we're actually headed to the remote cabin where a friend of mine went missing at uh, earlier this, actually end of last year. So this is kind of a combination a trip of adventure. We're just gonna go out and keep our eyes open and see if we see any kind of signs to me that may give us more clues. It is cold. You can see I don't wear my hats too often, but I've got my brother Vitaly. Hey guys, lots of new snow in the mountains. It's gonna be our first big trip this season, so I'm really excited. Four to five feet of snow up in the mountains, it's probably gonna to be too much. Too much snow, and there is such a thing as too much snow where you're uh, stuck up to your neck in snow. And before I get in the truck, let me show you this. Isn't that just gorgeous? It pays to get out to adventure. Hopefully you're doing that today. Come along with us. I gotta show you something. We're on Big Lake, Alaska right now. There's a truck. It's standing on ice. We got to the spot where we're actually gonna have to uh, turn around. Look at this, gnarly, gnarly stuff. There's no way we're getting through this. We're going right into this stuff if we, uh, if we drove. So we're gonna drive through that Southport Marina building. We don't wanna do what this guy did. He was clearly stuck and he's not looking too good, is he? Ugh. We are here, Willow, Alaska. It's about uh, oh, about 15 below. So basically gotta get our two iron ponies all warmed up. What a day, let me tell you. It was snowing like mad here a week ago and now we get to go and shred that powder and uh, absolutely wreck havoc in the mountains. out here got so many trucks and trailers showing up with sleds good thing we got here on time the parking lot's just about full let's get this uh 450 off the truck and things bundled up and off we go this should be awesome miles in. Check out these mountains right over here. Isn't that amazing? So we're staying between these two mountain valleys and this is uh, the trail that we'll be on for the next approximately eight miles before we get to a cabin situated on the side of the mountain. If you've watched any of the previous vlogs, you have seen it. It's an absolutely beautiful place. So the trail is about to get good so we're gonna take off here in a bit. Another about eight miles to go. And that's where the real beauty starts. Natalia's gonna show us how it's done. Getting ready to go mob it back down in here in this little slough. Man, this is so deep. Oh my goodness, I literally was up to my neck in snow on my 450. I had it first gear at the max RPM and I was barely moving. Probably some of the deepest snow we've ever been in, yeah? Yeah, five feet probably. Definitely make sure when you're back out in this backcountry you're riding with two people. We continue going that way. Inbound towards the valley, off we go. The powder is just out of this world. Oh my goodness. Wow, well the 450's uh, running pretty good. I got the big board kit on it, so it's been kind of a little bit, uh, a little weird, but I'm getting used to it and uh, hopefully, hopefully holds up. Down the trail we go. See you guys down there.
We found this great little opening here. Check this out. Gotta put some marks in it. Let me show you what this is all about. All right, guys, check this beauty out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. This is just like <sighs> snowmobiling, timber sledding heaven. Made it! Beautiful cabin. Let's go check inside. This is actually where my friend, I last saw him from the air in this cabin before he went missing. Uh, real sad situation. I've already uh, burned up all my gas. I just poured in my extra spare gallon. This thing has been guzzling fuel today. It's real thirsty. Uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's check this out, huh? Just like we left it. It's my buddy lived in for a good several months. He's nowhere to be found right now. As of the filming of this video, he is missing. We have some signs that suggests that he might be moving around, but not really buying that at the moment. Really, you know, just not him. Alright, well let's uh let's kind of uh enjoy this place for a little bit. I think it's time to uh, get the fireplace going. Another guy out here just, 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 just dude poking just around. Never seen him before, but uh, that's just kind of how we roll up here in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> We're just out here in the back country and... Uh, I started with 30 and I ended with three. Yeah, there was literally 30 of them and that's what happens when you're back in here. Everybody, Somebody just goes one way and, and another guy goes another way and then good luck finding each other. We got the stove going. So Justin, uh, the guy that we met out here, just uh, popping out of the trees. So a year, almost, uh, not quite a year ago, but there was a really, really good snowmobile in Alaska by the name of Chad uh, Crispin. And uh, he was like the definition of living the Alaska snow machining life. And unfortunately he was uh, lost and passed away in an avalanche. You were there with him? Oh yeah. When that happened? Yeah. So uh, we're gonna talk about uh, just how it happened. Yeah, Walk so, us through it. What was, no, it, what was like, it like? Uh, it was a nice bluebird day, just like it is right now. It was just out of Whittier. Well, anyways, you know, we're out there burning fuel, just having fun. And, you know, we were on our way back. And uh, my buddy Andrew, he comes ripping in there. And sure enough, uh, Andrew got caught in it. The other guy got caught in it. And Chad got in it. And Terry saw Chad, like, trying to side heel out of it. But it washed him out. Andrew was like chest deep <clears throat> when he was buried. He was at the end of the slough. They got to stop because Chad, Chad has, had his arm out of the snow. That was pretty much it. Yeah, you just see his arm just kind of waving and finally went limp. <clears throat> the other guy had a, a Abby bag, so he was able to stay on top. But yeah. Oh, he actually used that thing. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, <clears throat> even after I made the phone calls and drove back, so they got him to CV, CPR for like 30 to 45 minutes, and then it was another two hours before we even got the helicopter over there, the normal rescue team, they didn't want to fly because it was like, you know, bad weather. Uh, bad weather. Just so everybody knows, call the Air Force. Because the Air Force will come out there no matter what. And <clears throat> we didn't know that at that time. You should kind of take a view out here, like real quick, because not a lot of people know how beautiful it is out here. It wasn't, I'll tell you what though, if it wasn't for Chad, um, I don't think I would ever gotten into snow machining as really? much as I have. Yeah. You don't ever want to have to give your buddy CPR. You don't ever want to have to do that. That's That sticks with me to this day for sure. That's my good old boy. I mean, <laughs> I miss him to this day for sure. Oh, yeah, that's I miss you, you son of a gun. <laughs> 
Chad was a good one. He was, uh... Last, last time I saw him was in Prince William Sound, boating with Victor. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Pulled up side by side. Yeah, he just showed up. Hey, what's that? Who's that? Oh, that's probably Chad. Yep, turn up. <laughs> there comes Chad, like, 80 miles out there. <laughs> like, oh, how'd you get here? Oh, yeah. you pulled out a sewer, he's like... The guy uh, that was, uh, we were with, he's like, so you went through all that, the open water all the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Nothing. Just rode him right it's out. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> how was it? Sketchy, bro. I mean, it's good snow up there for sure. How high did you make it? I could have dropped in, but oh, I, was, I was scared as drop on the back back side there because I knew if I dropped in, how am I gonna come back up? <laughs> if I did, maybe I'd probably be in the avalanche though. So I was like, yeah, nope. for, forget that. No, nope, no, nope. I'm over that for sure. All right, guys, got the nylon back on my head, goofy looking thing, but uh, they sure do work. Keeps you warm under your helmet as you are cranking. What a beautiful day out here. Oh, check Horrible. this out. Horrible. Oh my we goodness. <laughs> we got so cheated today. <laughs> well, you saw um, Justin up there just uh, slaying it. Hey, you know, Climbing you just that... gotta get those pouters, bruh. You just gotta get pitted. <laughs> that was beautiful, man. That was so beautiful. These longer winter days is just like it's just so epic out here. Oh yeah. The only time to ride is springtime. <laughs> yeah, just... All right. Well, we're heading back out. We're gonna hit uh, a lot of cool spots on the way out. Uh, Justin's gonna kind of show us some moves, and uh, there's so much snow here, it's literally impossible to tear it all up today. <laughs> yeah, we need a crew of 30 to be able to. They're over there. They're over They're there. Over yonder. They're over there somewhere. But what I would like to do is um, maybe another weekend or two, <laughs> go up to the bowl up there, and there's actually an uh, abandoned cabin on the side of a mountain up there, and it's really hard to get to. I got to it last year, and it's, this thing is like has Talk like me, baby. this thing has newspapers in it from like 40 years ago in it. Talk it has like Coleman uh, kerosene cans inside. Let's do it. We should go check it out. A, a hill like this with a little pad that's just Perfect. big enough to yeah. build a cabin. That's, that's, I sleep like this. <laughs> I'm down. Let's do it, baby. Look at all this snow. I cannot get enough of this. This is, oh, and I keep falling through. This is such an incredible spot. Alright guys, back in the truck. Made it just fine. Um, now the whole idea is to load up these sleds without uh, getting stuck and doing any lifting. Guys, we're back on the lake. Thanks for joining on that one. That was absolutely incredibly fun. The view we got on the way home was epic. Like you could literally see every single mountain that surrounds our area, probably within 200 miles distance. Such a beautiful clear day and it's cold. The sunset over here was just absolutely stunning, gorgeous. One thing I didn't say, I literally ran out of fuel on my green timber sled in the parking lot. 
So that was a little tight on fuel and I'm so happy that we did not have to tip the other snow machine over and do that whole nonsense process to get me some fuel to get me back. But uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of that. What part did you like? What should I do more of in the future? Uh, thanks for subscribing. Of course, if you haven't already, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that little bell button to be notified when my videos come live. Adventure more and crave life. I'll see you on the next one.